Hi everyone. Uh, well, let's see how we can install KakiOS. Uh, as I've said previously, um, this is probably one of the best um, distributions out there, not only for work, but also for gaming. So first of all, um, let's go to the website, which is this one. Then you would click on download. And then you have here two options, either desktop edition or handheld edition. Uh, basically, if you just want a game, you can select this one and it automatically installs everything for you. It also has some kind of support for, um, I mean, out of the box support for uh, different uh, machine uh, specialized gaming machines like Rogue Ally, Steam Deck, all of those and so forth. So <clears throat> it's up to you how you want to do it. But that doesn't mean if you install the desktop edition, you cannot install thereafter the same stuff. So I'll, I'll take the desktop edition and then I'll show you how easy it is to set up. So you just download whatever you want. Uh, I'm sorry, for, uh, from one of these links, you just choose one. It will download for you a uh, ASO version. Uh, once you download that, you go to this software, which is Balana Etcher. So basically, if you uh, download Etcher, it's going to give you some options. If you are on Windows, you just download uh, Windows version. It's going to have uh, an exe file. Just run that and install the software. If you are on Mac OS, you do the same, Linux and so forth. Right? Once you install this and run the Balana Etcher, you would require a USB stick. Uh, maximum a gigabytes of drive, but I think uh, the image for KQS is a lot uh, smaller. If I am to check this out, I'll go to downloads, I'll look at the ESO, it's about two gigabytes uh, size. So <clears throat> I think a stick with four gigabytes would just suffice as well. Um, so that's good. You run Balana Etcher and then you select flash from file you will uh, go to wherever you downloaded that um, file for KakiOS. You need to be a .iso extension. You select that one, open it, and then select target. In my case, it's going to be uh, this drive, which had Zoin OS previously, but now we're going to flash it. So make sure it's just selected the uh, USB drive that you want. I'm going to select, and I'm going to say flash it. It's going to ask for my password, in my case. Might be maybe different for you on Windows or Mac OS. It depends. It might ask the password there as well, but I haven't used those uh, operating system in such a long time that <laughs> I literally don't remember any longer. <clears throat> in general, Linux distributions will always ask for a password. So once this is done, it's going to ask also for validation. It's good to just uh, let him validate that the uh, uh, process of flashing the disk has been uh, completed. Cool, all is done. You can close this, then you would open again. Uh, sorry, let's see. Just a moment. I'll just open this and put it back. Let's see. Now they should work. Okay, so it's here. Not bad. So now you have a, a uh, flash uh, distributed thing, right? So it's a bootable USB drive. Now with that bootable USB drive, uh, then you will uh, just uh, restart your uh, machine, Windows or Mac OS. If you want to test that, you have to look online and see how you uh, generally need to restart your machine to access BIOS. And once you access the BIOS, then you would need to boot from that file. Yes, to record, good. Now, once you've booted, um, you need to run uh, uh, one of these options, right? So if you have an NVIDIA card, it will automatically detect for you and I'll say, okay, you want to also install NVIDIA. My advice is to do so. If you have anything else, just choose Kakio as default. In my case, I'm just going to go with the NVIDIA drivers. Let's let it run a bit.
Cool. So as you can see now, the system uh, um, is preparing all the necessary uh, things we uh, we need to install. It's not going to take uh, a long time. It's going to be pretty fast in generally. Um, if you have uh, at this point in time, I know this doesn't work properly for you. <laughs> You can get to this step feel free to write down in the comments and we'll try together to see if we can uh, debug it and move things forward uh, at this point in time i'm just running this within a virtual box machine uh, as i mentioned in previous videos you can test this also within the uh, virtual machine so let's wait for the system to uh, uh, boot up as you can see by default it's running Plasma KDE uh, environment. So far, so good. So now we have an environment where we can actually uh, launch the installer. So I'm just gonna simply click launch install. And then we wait for the installer to, uh, uh, to uh, start. Now you're going to see a bunch of things uh, running around like uh, these terminals here uh, it's also uh, the calculus hello where we uh, initially started from so <clears throat> don't bother too much just uh, select uh, whatever language uh, you want to go for see in my case i just want to select uh, maybe english Let's move forward. It's going to ask your location. Mine is uh, in Romania. Choose whatever keyboard you want to uh, to uh, use. In my case, it's going to be an English one. And this part is going to ask you, hey, um, where do I want to install this? So if you look in here, you click, you're going to see in your case a bunch of drives. You just need to select the drive that you want to install it and make sure it's the drive that you need to install on so you don't erase your uh, data. Just pay attention on that. In my case, it's just one drive. I'm just going to say I want to erase the disk. It's no problem. In general, it's, uh, it's better to go like this or you just go with manual partitioning. And then you need to create this on your own. But for my own preference, what I usually do, I use two. Uh, uh, drives or one already made partition which I am uh, choosing to overwrite. In your case, it might be Windows um, <clears throat> or whatever have you on Mac OS. So my personal setup is to have two different drives. I have a drive which I'm installing on as a um, uh, main operating system and the other drive which I have everything that I have uh, saved for work. So just pay attention what it says here and select the uh, the proper uh, option. Then you just say erase disk. Uh, you can also go ahead and encrypt the system. What's going to happen is it's going to apply an encryption level on your data. So basically, if somebody stores your computer or you know access your drive, they can uh, you know copy any data. Or access the data without the encryption key and that will be basically your password for login within the system on the other hand if you forget the password and you just want to <laughs> recuperate the data well good luck with that it will be very hard to decrypt or broke the encryption um, also another thing that i've noticed once you have encrypted the system it might take uh, a bit longer to load than initial uh, uh, normal stuff without the encrypt system but it's up to you if you have absolute sensitive data go with encryption regardless that is going to take just a bit longer to load if not you just don't do encrypt system and just move forward um okay anything else just leave it as it is click next now in here you have uh, multiple options of desktops that you want to uh, to load um or use as your main desktop uh, edition granted um you can install at the latest stage as you want to see multiple uh, desktop versions think of this like a flavor so you can you know let me increase this a bit more so we can have a look together since we can do this this is one of the uh, uh i mean the current one that it's loading it's plasma desktop 
it's a pretty nice one. It's looking almost like Windows, right? GNOME has a bit a different way of looking. Then you have XEFA again, and uh, a couple of other flavors that you may want to try, like Cosmic, I know Hyperland. This might be uh, <laughs> um, a very interesting one because it's using only terminal. Maybe good for uh, system administrators, developers. Um, my personal advice, if you come from Windows, just go with Plasma Desktop or go with uh, Cosmic or maybe even Cinnamon. You can even use Gnome. But let's stick with uh, Plasma Desktop for the moment. Let's go next. Now in here is the part where I said you have by default KD desktop, but you can also choose, let's say GNOME desktop to switch between. So I'm just going to use this two. Let's see uh, what's installing for me, right? You can install anything else you want uh, in this regard. Uh, also here you have something like printing support. If you required uh, an accessibility to a screen reader and so forth. So choose all those things if you require them. Okay, so in here is going to ask the uh, username, uh, what's your name, and then it's going to add the username, and then it's going to assign a, um, a uh, <laughs> name to your computer. You can change that uh, if you want, or you can uh, now, or at a later stage. So I'm going to also put a password. Just make sure it's uh, one you remember and it's lengthy enough. Okay, I'm happy with the uh, overview. I'm just gonna click install now. And uh, now we're waiting a bit to finish up. Okay, it's all done. Just hit done. Um, this is we don't need. And then we just need to uh, reboot. So how about I start here? Yes, let's start now. Right. So now that we uh, we booted, it, uh, it's gonna give us the um, calculus uh, experience, and there you go. So uh, we're from here. What I did mention. If you want to access your desktops, you see here on the right corner. So first, you need to click the uh, username and then go into the right corner and select which flavor of this uh, operating systems you want to see. So for the moment, I'm just going to go with uh, World End Plasma. Let's try this one, right? I'm going to put a password. It's going to take a bit to load. And there you go. You have uh, this. Now, um, on the boot, you will see this CalcOS menu. This is where you can install different apps. You can you know, configure things if you want. For example, if you go to AppTwix, you have here, you see the system update. If you click this one, it will just do update. It's going to require your password. Yes. You're going to say, hey, it's up to date. That's good. Um, you have install apps from here. You can make this uh, maybe a bit bigger. And you can select anything you want, like browsers. You can install browsers after, uh, you know, uh, something like Google, uh, Chromium, Firefox, and so forth. For example, if you want to install Firefox, you just select this and then update the system. Your password. And then yes. <clears throat> okay. So that's the uh, installer for you. Um, if you want to change the way this looks, you don't like, uh, you know, the system. Uh, I'm sorry, this uh, flavor of, um, of desktop. You can, um, sorry, let's log out first. I'm just going to say leave, log out, log out now. 
I'm clicking again and I'm going to select from here uh, something else like, you know, GNOME. I'm just going to put my password again. Enter. And uh, there you go. You have a different experience now. As you can see, the desktop looks different, right? Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. So we have the exact same uh, you know, options with Calculus, but the system looks just a tiny bit different than what it was before. And this is how you, uh, you, know, you switch between the uh, version of the, um, of the um, um, desktop uh, environments, if you want to can even uh, change uh, some of those things from here. Yeah, that's dark, I like it. So that's good. That's pretty much it. Um, go ahead, uh, fool around with it, see what you can, uh, what you can experience, and uh, beyond this point, uh, you can start customizing your uh, your environment and uh, and see how it works. I'll have a, a video uh, with full customization on uh, on KQS. And I'll show you all the interesting things you can do uh, within this operating system. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the uh, next video.